Hey everyone! Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make shells out of the Stampin' Up! Blossom Builder punch. This is what I saw when I saw the shapes in this punch. I didn't see flowers, I saw little shells. So I have a piece of watercolor paper and I've put some torn masking paper down onto it. I kept both the positive and the negative. You will need them both. And I just have a Sizzix shim with some distress ink. I have Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, and Mermaid Lagoon. And I've just squished them onto this shim. I love just kind of grabbing whatever I have to do the little distress smash technique. I'm just going to spray water on these and get some little droplets going with the ink. You can do this with any dye ink. I just love these colors. And I'm going to pick up that wet ink with what will eventually be the water in my little seam, which is the section at the top that isn't covered by the masking paper. And I will link to the masking paper in my blog post so you can see what I use. It's my favorite, and you're going to see how cleanly this masks. So once I have that done, I'm actually going to dry this because I'm going to apply ink multiple times to just get a little bit of texture in both the water and the sandy portion of my scene. So it really helps if you dry in between each layer because then the colors don't blend together and you'll get the more discrete little drop shapes that you'll see here. And I love this technique because you can do this layer after layer and build up all sorts of fun patterns and depth that I think would be really hard to get if you were just creating the scene with a brush and your ink or watercolor. So I'll clean off my shim. Looking back, I probably should have picked that up with a scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to put down just a little bit more peacock feathers because I want a darker blue for some of the spots of texture on the top. And I'll pick this up, grab a little bit more of that pretty turquoise color. And then once again, I will dry this with my heat gun. To me, this looks like a beautiful Bahamian waterway. I love the greens and the blues together. I picked up some of the pooled water with my absorber. That also lends a little bit of fun texture because the absorber is a little bit textured. And now I will clean this off and we are done with the green and the blue. Just remove the masking paper. This is where you're going to see how cleanly it masks, even with a pretty wet technique. And I like that. I like the irregular shape. And then I'll take the top half that I tore and place that down. And I'm actually going to place it so that a little bit of the blue-green is sticking out. I will let these two overlap because a little bit of color overlap is much better than a white gap along that line. I'm taking some more Distress ink. And this one is tea dye, the second darker color. I think the first one was maybe old paper. And then I'll spritz those again and work on the beach portion of this image. Now you just want to make sure those edges are really stuck down, especially on the torn portion because you can get a little, you know, the paper gets a little bit fuzzy. So I'll just dry this for the first layer and then add a little bit of texture. It's the perfect sandy color with that more caramely color and then a little bit of warmth from the red. I think it really looks like a cool beach. And those little dots you get are really the fun of this technique. There's nothing smooth or boring about this little beach. And you just layer color until, you know, until you like it. And then I'll peel it away and you can see I don't have a white gap. 
and water and sand do blend at the shoreline and so it's completely okay that they're a little bit blended here from where I put the mask. And now I have the shapes that I punched with this blossom builder. And they just look like shells from the get-go to me, a little starfish, a little conch shell, a couple little random shells. So I punched those out of the same watercolor paper that I'm using here, which is Ranger. Somebody at my retreat gifted me a little stack of Ranger watercolor paper, and it's already cut to card front size, and so I'm really digging being able to just grab a piece and go. And I'll just use the two sand colors that are left on my shim to watercolor these because it will make it harmonious with the beach. And I can add details with the tea dye color on top of that nice caramely brown. This is actually inspired by a Dare to Get Dirty challenge. My friend Lori Craig, it's her challenge. And normally this type of challenge I don't usually do, but I thought this one was so incredibly beautiful that I had to give it a try. I'm weird about the kind of challenges that, that I like. I'm known to have an aversion to certain kinds of challenges because I feel not creative enough to do some of them. So I like the more abstract challenges. So go back and add shading. I didn't use the heat gun here. I just sort of let the colors blend a little bit. And then as I worked on other components of the punch, I would go back and add darker detail. But I didn't mind that it was fuzzing out a little bit because of the water, because this is a very organic scene. And it does not have to be crisp and perfect. Then all I did was just line the shells up, and they really look like a little family of shells there. And I went back and added just a tiny bit of gray with a Copic marker underneath the shells as I was assembling them onto the card front, a tiny bit of glitter at the shoreline, and then a sentiment from the Rose Wonder stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed that different way to look at this punch. Thanks so much for watching.